If you've flown close formation, then you know how much concentration it takes. So how do you find time to keep a lookout for hostiles while flying in formation? The USAF's answer is tactical formations. When we use the term tactical, what we're really talking about are several formations with increased separation between members of the flight. The basic formations we covered earlier in this series are used primarily when transiting civil airspace. But once you enter a mission area, you can expect to be in a tactical formation. Just like with basic formations, each member of the flight has certain responsibilities. Lead is responsible for maneuvering the formation. The wingman is responsible for being in the right position. The various formations can be referred to by their separate names, but when lead says tactical, this means line abreast. Line abreast, or lab for short, is like an extended version of route formation. Lead can direct entry into tactical formation with the radio call of tactical and the side, or by porpoising the aircraft. As a wingman, you will want to stay line abreast and never slip more than 10 degrees behind lead. You'll also want to be between 4,000 and 6,000 feet off lead's wing. In real life, it's usually not an issue to see another aircraft at these distances, but if you're having trouble keeping an eye on lead and DCS, then fly close enough to maintain visual. Stay within 2,000 feet of lead's altitude. With this fairly large bubble of freedom, you should have a lot more time to watch the skies for danger and keep an eye on your instruments. Don't forget that if you're higher than lead and fall behind, you can always trade altitude for airspeed. When in tactical formation, we want to fly near our corner velocity. So unless briefed otherwise, tactical formations are flown at a contract speed of 350 knots. Situations where you might change that include flying below 10,000 feet MSO where speed restrictions might be in place, or at high altitudes where differences in aircraft performance would make a Mach number more appropriate. Line abreast is great for medium to high altitude air-to-air -air missions, but what about low altitudes where terrain might get in the way of maintaining that formation? For that environment, we have wedge formation. When directed into wedge, the wingman will get into a position that is 30 to 45 degrees off lead 6 o'clock. This is referred to as 30 to 45 degrees aspect angle, or AA for short. Make sure you're at a range that's between 4,000 and 6,000 feet from lead. There are a few rules to remember when flying wedge. First, wingmen will never fly lower than lead at low altitudes and no higher than 500 feet above lead unless it's to avoid an obstacle. Turns do not need to be called in wedge, and the wingman can cross lead 6 o'clock if required. Once you understand these two ship formations, it's pretty easy to expand them to four ship formations. To create a wall formation, you just have all wingmen fly line abreast off of lead. A box formation is two elements flying line abreast, separated in trail by 6,000 to 9,000 feet. The wingmen in either element can fly on either side of their respective element lead. Then we have Fluid 4, which mixes line abreast and elements of wedge together. In a Fluid 4, the element leads fly a line abreast formation together. Alongside them, each of the element wingmen fly a modified form of wedge. Instead of flying at four to 6,000 feet, they maintain position between 500 and 1,500 feet from their element lead. In these four ship formations, you're taking what you learned in two ship formations and applying them to a larger group. Now, what about making turns while in a tactical formation? Those are a little different than the turns we learned about in the basic formation part of this series. In the next video, we'll go over what you need to know for tactical turns. I hope this video was useful to you, and thanks for watching.